It's the Daily Dog. Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for being with me today for another edition of the Daily Doug. So I'm hanging out, having a good time. It's a Friday afternoon. I want to get the afternoon and the weekend started off right. So we're going to listen to some music. Uh, I've been trying to figure out what song to listen to today. And a, a Divine Intervention, like like uh, 30 minutes ago, I was on my Twitter feed just kind of scrolling through and I saw Opeth tweeting about uh, this today being the 20th anniversary of the release of their studio album called Blackwater Park. And I was like, well, there you go. A bunch of folks have requested Blackwater Park, the song, and that being the title track from this album being released 20 years ago today, that's what we're gonna do. So I have opted for the live recording that is on YouTube. It is from their live concert at the Royal Albert Hall from 2010. Uh, I am excited to hear this and see what we can uh, uh, glean from it. Let's let's take a listen. Here we go. Opeth, Blackwater Park, live at Royal Albert Hall. That high notes an E. Sounds like a harmonic. Two, three. Huh. Woo! Do 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 Major seven to an A minor. To some sort of D sharp chord. That's an interesting progression, y'all. That high note you hear. So that high note's in every one of those chords except the last one. That's an interesting bunch of chords. So they've got a high E uh, on a harmonic, it sounds like, uh, consistent through those first few chords. And the first chord sounds like C-sharp minor. The E is the third of that chord. Works fine. The next chord is a major third up, an F chord. And the E is the major seventh of that chord. It's a very interesting progression to go from C-sharp minor to F major seven, it sounded like. And then it went up another third, another major third, to an A minor chord. Um, that could just be going right up the frets, the same um, general sequence they played a chord on C sharp, they played a chord of major third up on F, and they played a chord of major third up on A. And the E is in all of those chords. The E is the third of the C sharp chord, the seventh of the F chord, and the fifth of the A minor chord. And then there's like some sort of weird D sharp chord. And it's with all the distortion, it's hard to figure out like if it's an actual like D sharp major or D sharp minor or whatever before it goes loops back to C sharp. Uh, to start the, uh, the the sequence again. Um, is that clear as mud? <laughs> Let's go back a little bit. That's that's a cool progression. Da -da, da -da. F A C sharp C sharp Huh A straight ahead right groove. Mm. I love that that high, it's like an orchestrational technique to keep that consistent note in all of those chords. And they settle on D. Huh. Kind of mixtures of D major and D minor melodically over the top of that power D.
That's cool. That's a cool egg. It's a nice change, texturally, tempo-wise. There's there's hints of like. D major popping in at just little bits, but mostly I think it's just D minor. I love the high harmonics. It gives context to uh, what the other uh, players are playing. That's a high fifth, a high A over the D. There is a major third. Descending chromatics, D to C sharp, C in the bass, B. And I thought, did I hear the Mellotron come back? Or at least the, the keyboard synthesizer version of the Mellotron? Looked like he was playing as some sort of suspended chord. Sounds great. Never been to England. I would love to go to Royal Albert Hall. They're doing that again, that descending uh, chromatic um, pattern. Does he do growling the whole the whole song? Makes it more difficult to understand the meaning lyrically behind the song. A harder version of that descending scale. But it's up in E now. That's that's I didn't catch that. They moved up to E it sounds like.
it's really tight from an ensemble perspective. They're all hitting those syncopations right on the money and just laying into them. It's, it's re hitting really hard. Rocks hard. I'm just trying to make out what they're doing, but the kick drum's going crazy and they just do it not sure I can understand it. <laughs> $50 fine for nothing but straight 16th notes in the kick drum. I don't care how cool it is or how neat it is um, <laughs> uh, from a technique point of view. It was a cooler groove when it wasn't there, in my opinion. Yeah, double leading tone. Yeah, da, da, um, that's cool. Yeah, da, da, D sharp, C sharp to D. Maybe it's a sign of things imploding on a central point. Double kick, I, 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 I promise I won't harp on it anymore, but it's, I just think it takes away from the rest of the song. It's all over a static chord. It's pretty much just power D and they're playing these riffs over the top of it. That's cool. I'm listening to that riff. The riff is is interesting. That keeps landing on a G sharp, which is sharp four in this key. It's a Lydian fourth, but the way that they're using it doesn't sound like that. That's the best, you know, that's the best part of the groove right there. Cool. Goes wild. Yeah, they are. They're gonna take a break. <laughs> awesome. It really is. I mean, they're an awesome band. It reminds me of when I got to hear them. Okay, everybody's going crazy. Is that it? Okay. It reminds me 
of when um, I did actually get to go see them uh, with my brother and thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, what I remember of it, <laughs> because we, we were a little uh, intoxicated, uh, was that it was loud and fast and those kick drums just bothered with me the whole time. Uh, the, I don't, I need to look up the lyrics. Uh, I had, I had them pulled up on a different tab because I, I was expecting to catch some of them as we went, but I really couldn't catch a damn thing be, because, uh, of just how it was mixed and, and him doing the growl, uh, color to his voice the entire time. He is describing, uh, a place called Blackwater Park. He is a, um, I am just a spectator, an advocate documenting the loss. Uh, so there is, um, death and, um, uh, pain and just, uh, you know, perversions bloom round the bend, seekers lost in their quest, ghosts of friends, follicks. This is like under a waning moon. It is the year of death. Heavy shit. <laughs> right? Uh, so he's a spectator. Maybe it's a metaphor for society, him looking on from the outside and seeing destruction and pain and um, just systems that don't work the way they're supposed to and uh, expressing outrage, uh, uh, you know, just at a loss for, you know, what to do about it or uh, if there is anything we can do about it. So, uh, I would love to know what you guys think of the meaning of this song. Uh, I'm guessing it's sort of a culmination of all that's led up to it in the album. If it's like some of the other stuff from them that I've listened to, everything seems to be interconnected and part of a larger scheme. So uh, that's what I'm guessing. The thing that I thought was the most interesting about that whole thing, I've never heard that particular chord progression like that, I don't think, before. Let me talk about it again just very quickly. He had a high, or they had a high E at the beginning of that. And they had a C sharp minor chord, right? So I'm thinking four sharps, that's C sharp minor. And they've got the third of the chord up there hanging out. And that's going to be sort of a focal point. The very next chord that they go to is an F major seven chord, F, A, C natural, and then the E. Both the F and the C sharp would be sharps in the key of C sharp minor, and both of those get taken away to give them the ability to move that chord from a C sharp to an F. Um, it's, it's an inharmonic major third, right? Uh, and then once they get to that F, that E is still in that chord, and then they move again by a major uh, third, the F up to an A, and they still keep that high E in the chord. So they go from C sharp to F to A to D sharp, uh, before they go back to C sharp in that opening section. I thought that was just really cool. I may end up stealing that <laughs> because there are some interesting sounds uh, that lie in that chord progression. So maybe coming to a choral piece near you, you never know. Uh, I need to listen to the rest of that album, if not more of, uh, at least more of the songs and have it be in context. Uh, and I look forward to doing that. It's a, it's, it's still early on a Friday. Uh, we can still get into a lot of trouble. So, uh, <laughs> thanks for hanging out with me. Let me know what you thought. Uh, if I'm off base, uh, what you think the lyrics uh, are meaning? Are they metaphorical, or are they just sort of um, wrapped up in something larger than this? Um, let me know. Sounds fun. Thanks again for being with me today, and we'll see you again later for another reaction. And uh, for now, thanks for being here, and we'll see you next time on The Daily Doug.